Hard to believe, but there are some racing cars out there that are still driven in a similar way to cars of ye olden days. On this episode of How Motorsport Works, we're going to look at a technique that confuses some and is often made unnecessarily difficult by those who try to explain it. Rev matching. Now if you've watched GTs, prototypes and most single seat series, you'll know that the gears in those cars are switched up and down by the flappy paddle mechanisms on the rear of the steering wheel. Pioneered by Ferrari in the late 80s, these systems are now so intricate that the gears can be switched seamlessly in less time than it takes you to blink. Unfortunately, there are people out there that claim that this isn't real driving, and to be good at driving you need to be able to A, drive fast with an H-pan gearbox, and B, be able to heel and toe. But I'm going to use the term rev matching all through this video given that heel and toe isn't exactly a catch all term for this technique. Heel and toe is just one way of doing it. Also I'm not going to cover synchronised gearboxes, non-synchronised gearboxes, the ins and outs of a dog box and all that because this series is just to give you a starter's guide and boil things down into very basic terms. Yeah I may have gotten a bit carried away on the last video. So why do racing drivers with H-pattern gearboxes and so on rev match? Well in simple terms, it stops them getting killed. If you're one of the dinosaurs still on the planet, you may still drive a manual gearbox with three pedals. Accelerator on the right, brake in the middle and clutch on the left. A, B, C. Simple stuff. You accelerate until you need to change gear, you let go of the accelerator, put the clutch down, pop the car into the next gear, bring the clutch up while giving a bit of gas for the smooth gear change and rinse and repeat until you get to where you need to be. And most people with a driving licence can do this all day, every day. But if you don't know what the function of a clutch is in a manual car, all it does is disconnects the gearbox from the drivetrain to allow you to select a new gear. If you try to change gear without using the clutch, you get that awful grinding sound and then you'll strip the gears, knacker the gearbox and so on. And it's the same for changing down. Let go of the accelerator, drop the clutch, select the previous gear, and then when you bring the clutch back up, you'll get a spike in engine revs that help slow the car down. And that's called engine braking. And this is because of the way gearboxes work. So, for instance, you'll need more revs a minute to reach 40 miles an hour in second gear than you will in, say, fifth. In my road car, I'd probably be close to redlining the engine. But if you try to do that in an old Lotus or a V8 supercar or something else with a lot of power and torque relative to the amount of mechanical and aerodynamic grip, you won't last very long at all. The wheels will spin up under torque, you'll lock the rear brakes and the car just gets out of control. By rev matching, either through heel and toe or just blipping with the right foot, you're basically putting the revs at a point where those wheels can't spin up anymore. Now heel and toe is probably the reason you're here, so I'll cover that first. It's A, fun, and B, looks fucking cool. Now like pretty much every other human being on the planet, I only have two feet, so how the hell am I expected to operate all three pedals in quick succession without turning into Michael Flatley? The simple answer is, you just operate the brake and the gas with your right foot and the clutch with your left. It's very simple. Well in theory it is anyway. So step one, brake with your right foot, then step two, clutch while still on the brake, then change gear while still holding down the clutch and the brake, then use the side of your right foot to give the accelerator a good old flick while the clutch and the brake are still active. Now your brake application level will probably vary here, but it's all about trying to keep the front brakes from locking. Then as soon as you've stopped blipping, bring the clutch up and then rinse and repeat for how many gears you need to change down. Like I say, it's quite easy to explain, but it takes a long time to master since you need to make your gearbox last without ruining it. And I can guarantee you that none of the footage you've seen today is first take. It's easy for me to sit here and show you how to do it in a simulator that doesn't simulate clutches or simulate lost gears or clutch temperature or clutch slip, but hopefully it gives you an idea as to how Jim Clark and those guys did it back in the day. And they were doing this on the old Nürburgring at 3am at Le Mans around Monaco, the works, and V8 supercar drivers still do it at Bathurst today. But the V8 supercar drivers have two different ways of rev matching. Some drivers do the whole heel and toe thing such as Mark Winterbottom or Shane Van Gisbergen and Cameron Waters, but some like Fabian Coulthard and Greg Murphy 
they use their left foot to brake and then blip with the right. And this is used in cars that have sequential gearboxes like those found in V8 supercars and some other series. Porsche Cup used to be blipped manually but I think they've migrated to flappy paddles now with the current generation car. Now the blipping technique is exactly the same but without using the clutch on the way down. As you change gear, give the right pedal a flick with the right foot. That's because with those sequential gearboxes you're effectively just slamming the car into gear every time. But in the case of V8 supercars, doing it with the right foot is actually more difficult to do than heel toe. Because you're violently slamming the car into gear every time you pull the shifter, you have to be way more precise with your rev matching. The clutch just gives you that extra bit of wiggle room because you're disconnecting it from the drivetrain every time you change gear. That high pitched whine that you hear? Well, that's the gearbox. But the vast majority of cars with sequential gearboxes, so Formula 1, GT3, DTM, BTCC and so on, will all have some sort of electronic auto blip fitted to the cars. In the case of F1, it's... well it's a necessity. A computer can react a lot faster than a human. Such is the way of life. The only top level series currently running an H pattern gearbox is NASCAR but MX-5s and most club level production car series will also be using one. Formula Ford still has a 4 speed H pattern setup but since they're trying to phase it out in favour of Formula 4 it's a dying series worldwide, although it is still very popular in Australia. In this world of computers and electronics rev matching will be a dying art, purely because flappy paddles and auto blip are, well, they're faster and racing teams are going to focus on what makes them faster, not what makes their drivers look more talented in the eyes of fans. There are still series out there doing it, but not many, if any, are at the top level. Except V8 Supercars and NASCAR, obviously. But for any racing enthusiast, it's a technique that shouldn't be overlooked. So hopefully this video gives you a beginner's insight into the world of rev matching, and if you've learned something today, give this video a like, and for more, click subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons of Patreon for their continued support, and if you wish to join them or join in the Discord stuff, then all you need is in the description box for you. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward, have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.